If you can't do nothing against the truth before vocab, I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the tabernacle of David, the whole elect, scattered abroad throughout the earth. Now, this devil tries to uh, go into the eschatology of one West. And, uh, you know, he's speaking with disdain and uh, contempt about, you know, what we teach as far as the end times concerning prophecy. Of course, he doesn't agree with the idea of us being in rulership, you know, at the end of this whole uh, Empire of E, you know, he doesn't like the idea of us, you know, being, um, you know, at the top, you know, the world being under rulership of the so-called Negro, Hispanic and Native American is, is, is very, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he, he has a lot of uh, vitriol, you know, just for the idea of us, you know, being sovereign, you know, being free of uh, Edomite supremacy, you know, not uh, worshiping his pagan idolatrous uh, ideologies and, you know, Christian dogma, you know, being uh, slaves, you know, up under them. You know, he, 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 he's disgusted at that idea. He hates that. So he's sitting here discussing that. With this guy, he looked like a, a small hat, you know, and he does like a, I guess, a little narration of what we teach as far as the end times, you know, concerning the salvation, the transition from this wicked kingdom to the kingdom of heaven. And he also slanders and say that we make it more about us than we do you know, Yahweh Shai and his dealings and his involvement. You know, it's like we exclude Yahweh Shai and the Most High from the world to come, which that's a, that, that's the, the biggest lie told. We always mention how Yahweh Shai is going to be given the dominion, how he's going to be the one to sit upon the throne, how he's going to be the one reigning in the kingdom of heaven. We always maintain that he's also going to be the one that's going to come and deliver us from out of the hand of our enemies. He's going to come and judge and make war with the nations. But watch how this devil, this snake, watch how he spins it. This is what he came up with. This man is Haman all the way. But let's uh, let's listen real quick. On. And has the number one and then west and then eschaton it's like a 52 second video where i show pictures and images that these guys use and then i briefly explain their eschatology and yep. again it really has very little to do with jesus it has nothing to do with serving him so you see he says it has little to to he's basically saying that it has nothing we when we talk about the end times when we talk about the kingdom of heaven Yahweh Shai has little to nothing to do with it, but that's a that's the that's a lie. Um, we always say that um, we're going to be joint heirs with our Lord Yahweh Shai. I mean, Paul mentions that we're going to be uh, joint heirs with them. Anything that we receive and and get. Is because Yahweh Shai himself is who's going to grant it to us. Let's 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 get a let's get an example, but let's let's go to that in Romans eight real quick. This is uh, Romans eight and starting at verse sixteen, it says, "The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High." And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach. If so be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified 
together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And we always maintain that before we even get into the kingdom, before we even get to that, that, that place of rest, we have to labor. We have to, you know, feed the sheep. We have to, we, you know, our attitude is we're unprofitable servants. We're actually serving our Lord by doing what we're doing. This isn't of us. But we also understand that if we suffer, if we go through the, the persecution, being reviled, you know, people speaking about us with, with, with all kind of uh, vitriol, like you do, well, we're, we're fulfilling the sufferings of our Lord and Savior. Because they did the same to him. So we're expected to go through the the, the humiliation, you know, uh, being evil spoken against, being falsely accused, being reviled, being separated from everyone's company. The Lord said, blessed are you when, when people would do that to you. All right. The, the world doesn't like us because we we call out all the wickedness, all the evil. The way they did it to our Lord. He said, the world cannot hate me, but it can't hate you. But me, it hated because the works that I testified thereof are evil. So we glory in the persecution. We glory in the cross. So if we suffer with them. We also going to be glorified with them. And what are we going to uh, inhabit for following him unto the end? We're going to be changed into his likeness. We're going to receive the glory that he has. We're going to be changed. That's one of the main things we talk about. When we get the power, we're also going to have uh, incorruptible bodies. Right now, we have the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, to prophesy but the Lord is going to grant us uh, power as well. That's going to happen. It says that in Psalms 110, in the day of thy power, thy people shall be willing. Let's get a Philippians now real quick. So we're going to receive glory just like he received glory. We're going to also have uh, the, the glorious body like he has. Philippians 3 and 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Mashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is, he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And we talk about how, you know, we're going to be a, uh, Extra to rest, we're going to be super men and, and super women because we're going to be changed. All right. The Lord, when he uh, resurrected, he came back in his glorious form. Okay. But he was still a man. They, saw, they still saw a man. But but the, the glory, the, the, the glorious being that he came back as was able to go up into that cloud and ascend back into the heavens. You know? Um, so we're going to be just like he is. You think our Lord can't fly? Because he makes, he makes fun of us saying that we're going to be able to fly. Well, you think our Lord and Savior, you don't think he could, he, he could fly in his glory? He can't fly? He can't, you, you, so you're saying that he can't do supernatural things or can he? The scriptures already told you of some of the miracles he was able to do when he was just, uh, you know, when, when, when he was a man on earth. How much more in his celestial nature? All right. 
And then we also talk about how uh, when the Lord comes back, he's going to subdue the nations and put them under his feet. A preview of that is uh, King David. King David, he subdued the nations and put them under the, under his feet. That's one of the things that y'all don't like to talk about is the time of uh, the reign of uh, King David. You know, that was kind of, you know, his reign and Solomon's reign was like a sneak preview. All right. And we always talk about that. We're one of the main camps that talk about the reign of uh, King David. Because that's, that's expect it to return back to that. Where you're going to have a, a, a kingdom where a man, men are going to be in, in power. Our men are not going to be, the, the Israelite men are not going to be weak. All right. They're not going to be under uh, a matriarchal uh, 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 society. And the, and the law is going to definitely go uh, forth. So this is uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 23 it says, but every man is in his order, his own order. Yahweh Shai, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Yahweh Shai that is coming. Then come of the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. And that's why when you read in Revelation 11 chapter, it talks about how he's going to have, you know, um, all these crowns. It says the kingdoms of, of, of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord. All right. He's going to have come. He's going to come having all of the many crowns on his head because he's going to dethrone all the leaders of this current uh, world. With Esau being at the, the, the top of it. All right, Amalek being the first, the head, the chief. That's why he's coming to judge and make war. That's why he's gathering these nations in the Middle East as we speak for war. It says, for he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. We always uh, maintain this. We Come on, man. We, and we even quote when Yahweh Shai said, he that will not have me uh, to reign in my father's kingdom, uh, uh, bring him hither and slay him before me. Yahweh Shai is going to, he's going to be uh, king. And we're, and, and we're going to serve the Lord by uh, being priests and kings and teaching these nations how to, how to keep these uh, laws. And we're going to praise him every day. We read, uh, read Psalms 149. It says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expect, accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that the most high may be all in all. So th this guy, he's, uh, you know, he's running with his narrative to demonize us. And it's, and it's an epic fail. We've always maintained that there's still going to be that, that hierarchical, hierarchical uh, order. Where you're going to have the most high, then you're going to have his son, and then you're going to have the Israelite man. Which was what it was always intended to be, even going back to the beginning. All right. So we're going to have order. And yes, Yahweh Shai is going to be our head in the kingdom. He's going to sit upon the throne. David also is going to have his position. All right. Sitting upon the throne. So what is this guy talking about? Let's get another one because our Lord, after he subdued his enemies, this is what he promised to those who continue in, in, in his word and endure until the end. Revelation 2 and 25, it says, but that which you have already hold fast till I come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. What is that talking about? Explain that to me, because we bring this up all the time as well, concerning 
uh, uh, the coming reign of our Lord in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be here on earth, with Jerusalem being the, 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 the epicenter, I mean, you, he acts like what we speak and what we say is not backed by prophecy. He has an issue. He really despised uh, the, the, uh, the, these prophecies. He despised the word of the Most High. He's not going to flat out tell you, but that's his action shows. The things that he has to say against us for our teachings. He hates the, the vocab. Just admit it, man. You're just putting on a front. You really, you really are not a, a real true believer. You're just on a mission. You're dedicated to try to tear us down. That's that's where you, your your zeal comes in. But anyway, uh, let's let's go to uh, Psalms two. Because yeah, we talk about uh, uh, captivity, putting the nations that put us in slavery, putting them in captivity. Well, even the Lord said this. Psalms 2 and 8, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the utmost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And the, the same Yahweh he promised his, his, his servants that. So he's reiterating what uh, is said in his song. What's, so what is the issue? But anyway, let's let's go back. It has very little to do with uh, God because, you know, whom I, who, has very little little to do with the Most High. It's the Most High that's going to grant us this, man. All right, the, the, the dominion from the Heavenly Father is going to be given to His Son. We bring out Daniel the seventh chapter all the time. After all these empires rule. Then it's gonna you're gonna have the everlasting dominion, which is gonna be given to the saints. And it starts with our Lord Yahweh Shai, all right, the Son of Man coming to the ancients of the ancient of days, getting that receiving that glory and that dominion. And that dominion is gonna be given to the Israelites, the saints. You won't be a part of that. You don't understand uh, the eschatology of, of, of the Bible. You don't. This is why you have a problem with it. Who do we have in heaven but you? Right? Whom have I in heaven yeah. but you? Right. That's what the psalmist says. He's our portion, meaning we're satisfied with him. That's what the Christian, when they're in their right spirit, that's what they center their heavenly experience on. Because we realize we don't know a lot. We're not told a lot of. That's not... A main part of our revelation, we just trust God. Yeah, a lot ain't, ain't revealed to you because you're not of His. All right, let me get uh, John. John 14 and uh, 17. It says, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him, not neither knoweth Him, but you know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. All right, so these things. Are, are given to the Lord's servants, man. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord will, will do nothing but reveal of his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And, 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 and that's what you're not. All right. So you're going to have a, you're going to have a hard time grasping all right, the, the, the concept of the eschatology and how things are going to go. The Lord already gave that to us in the book. So it is what it is, man. Uh, that it's going to be good because we trust him. But the key element is that he dwells with us forever and we would dwell with him forever. Uh, no, he's not going to dwell with you forever. All right, because you're not an Israelite. Let's correct that. So he just keep making all kind of he he like to slide in little false statements, all right. And that's what the devil does, man. You gotta you gotta pay close attention to what they say. He said that uh, the Most High is gonna dwell with with them. Who who which what you mean? No, he's gonna dwell with his people forever. Let's get um 
Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. And uh, we're like maybe around the 27th verse. Let me start at um, Ezekiel 37 and 25. It says, and they, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. He said them. He didn't say you. He didn't say, he said the, it, basically the, the children of Israel. And it says, my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel where my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So notice how this devil tried to slip his Christian BS in there. Just, let's hear that again real quick. Says he's our portion, meaning we're satisfied with him. That's what the Christian, when they're in their right spirit, that's what they center their heavenly experience on. Because we realize we don't know a lot. We're not told a lot of. That's not a, a main part of our revelation. We just trust God that it's going to be good because we trust him. But the key element is that he dwells with us forever and we would dwell with him forever. <laughs> no, he, the Israelites will dwell with him. All right. Forever. Because we're, you know, when, when we're transformed, you know, we will be uh, the sons of God and his tabernacle is going to dwell with us. Revelation 21 and one, it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth and the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, all right, Israelites, the elect of Israel, coming down from the Mosiah of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of the Mosiah is with men, the Israelite man, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and the Mosiah God himself shall be with them and be their God. And, that, and that, that's simple and plain. All right, let me get a Joel 2 and 27. And it says, And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. All right, so I just I just destroyed your, what you just said <laughs> with, with, with three precepts. This guy, he just he just full of talk, man. And you got a dumb ass, you got a, a a guad of dumbass Negroes in the comment section agreeing with this. That's why we don't care too much about the two thirds of you, man. Right now, you're no different than an Edomite. You're a, you're a heathen right now, until, unless you repent. Okay, listening to this damn devil, this damn snake. Their heaven is basically this earth just with the roles of who's in charge, how they want it. Vocab, I have a question. What, what, what do the small hats, since you advocate for them, you know, them is your peoples, uh, what, what do they say their heaven is? You know, what, what, do their tam, what did the Talmud say about all this? What is the eschatology in, in the Talmud? Who do they say about the Messiah in the Talmud? What they're doing in, uh, what they're planning on doing uh, to Gaza and the people in the, the Palestinians, um, is, is, is that, you know, is this part of uh, restoring or reestablishing uh, uh, Zion? Is, is this part of the, the, the kingdom for uh those 1948ers? I mean, you you support what they're doing. You you say that they should, uh, uh, you know, get vengeance. So my question to you is, you know, uh, is this how they're going to get the, the kingdom? 
Is this how, you know, their world is going to uh, come in? Because it's, pro it's, it's, it's interesting. You have an issue with how we say uh, we're going to receive the kingdom. But look at what they're doing over there right now. Do you agree with the Greater Israel uh, Project? And how they uh, plan on uh, executing that agenda? Because they're doing it right now. Well, you say that's, uh, you know, that's going to usher in the kingdom. And what does that mean for us Goyim? And according to them, you know, we're all Goyim, right? Anyway, let's listen to a little more and then uh, I'm going to close out. I, I got to get ready for, for work. Okay. Very carnal minded. Let's look at some art by one West Hebrew Israelites. This represents their eschatology, and they believe the chariots, which they say are actually the UFOs, come back manned by black angels and then help the Israelites destroy all of their racial and ethnic enemies. They believe. Yeah, the, the Lord's going to come back and he's going to judge and make war. I mean, I don't know how many lessons we done done on this about how he's going to uh, come back. And, and, and the prophecies use variations of, uh, you know, similar to uh, symbolism, of course, to represent how he's going to come back and he's going to slain. Uh, he's going to he's going to slay from one end of the earth, even to the other. And he's coming back in the cloud. All right, which is the, the 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 chariot? Isaiah sixty six fifteen down, uh, Jeremiah uh, um, Jeremiah twenty five verse uh, thirty on down. Revelation one and seven. Um, I mean, there's so many precepts. You know, we can uh, go into man. Revelation uh, eighteen, how we're gonna go up in in the cloud. Revelation eleven. Verse 12. He act like we just make these things up. Like nothing is biblical. No, you just don't like the outcome. This is what you disagree with. So you are narrated in, in, a, in a such way that when people hear it. People are going to, you know, dismiss it. Because it's alterated at. You know, your uh, assessment, you know, what you feel or what you think we're saying. Very biased. All right. You know, different than mainstream news. But this is all a fail. And this is our faith. Y'all, you're the only people that actually you, you you preach a good game about being a believer and having faith, but you scoff at our faith. Even when y'all approached uh, the apostles and elders a few years ago, and y'all were marveling at the fact that a lot of the uh, answers that they gave y'all was based on faith. They kept saying it, it, it's 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 our faith, and y'all and, and y'all kept questioning them about that. So what you know? What's the issue? When the Lord said, uh, he that uh, leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Y'all got an issue with that. Y'all have an issue really with the faith of, of the Israelites. You know, because this is something that we don't see. And that's why you question it and you think it's foolish. You, you dismiss it and write it off as something that's just absurd because you can't see it. Well, what is the definition of faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know? Just a, just a thought. But anyway, let, let, let's just listen to this little thing and then we'll close. They will be able to fly, have superpowers, have laser beams come out. Yeah, we're going to be able to fly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's get Isaiah 40 and 31. And it reads... 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? They that they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not be faint. What is that saying? What is it? What does it mean by we're going to mount up with wings? What do you do with wings? You know, it says they're going to run and not be weary. So we are not, we're not going to get, we're not going to ever uh, get tired or weak. So that's a whole different strength. That That's, that's celestial strength. We're not going to be able to do that in these, in these uh, fleshly bodies. So is that really far fetched? We're listening to what the prophecies say. This is the eschatology here. Essentially, heat vision that will melt and destroy opponents. They believe that this is spoken of in places like Obadiah, the book of Revelation, and they believe that there will be a wholesale destruction of the United States because while this invasion is happening, nuclear missiles will also be coming from abroad and then they'll be transferred to Israel and they'll rule there. That's what they believe. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And all of this is biblical. <laughs> Uh, just because you don't agree with it doesn't mean that is uh, that is not true. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end with this. Romans uh, three and verse three. It says, "For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid. Yeah, let the Most High be true, and every man a liar, as it is written, Thou mayest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged." All right, and we believe every everything said. All right, we teach it, we speak it, we because we believe it. All right, and uh, we don't we don't we don't give us two shits. All right, that you don't uh, agree. Okay, and you you just show that you're obsessed with us, but there's nothing you could do against us. You know, all you could do is just paint a certain narrative, and you know, uh, try to get as many. Uh, unstable souls as you can to, uh, to 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 leave and depart from this, you know. Like you 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 know how the scriptures say the angels rejoice over uh, a sinner that repents. You're the, the the demon that rejoices when an Israelite turns back to his vomit <laughs> from righteousness. You know, you celebrate that and you allow them to come on your platform. You know. So, it's a, it's a it, consider it uh, um, a bad omen if you're an Israelite and you end up somehow on Vocab's uh, panel. You end up on his show talking to him. Uh, you know that's that's not a good it's not a good look. All right, but anyway, I'm gonna end off, man. I'm gonna give all praise, glory, and honor to y'all, Bashem, y'all, shy. To the next lesson, Shalom.